hello and welcome back to the Ten Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and the project we got this week is going to be a fabrication project primarily. Be a little bit of machining, but not much. Uh, as you can tell by the title of the video and by the thumbnail, we're going to be making a forge, and we're going to be making it out of a cast iron skillet. Um, this channel is not going to become a blacksmithing channel for a number of reasons, two of which I don't have the stamina or the strength to swing a blacksmith hammer, and secondly, and probably more important, I don't have the skill to, uh, to move metal like some of the folks I've seen. But I have run across several occasions recently where I needed to really generate some heat. Uh, I've got a kiln back there, uh, and that's good up to about 900, 1,000 degrees. But to, to get metal where I really need to move it and to uh, maybe do some heat treating, I believe a forge would be beneficial here in, in the uh, tin barn. Uh, but not enough, I don't think, to warrant uh, spending a couple hundred, a couple three hundred dollars on a gas forge. Uh, I like something that uh, I can build myself, and as we all do, I did my research on YouTube, and it seems the most common form of uh, shop built uh, forges other than gas is making them out of a brake drum with pipe fittings and maybe even a hair dryer. And so I went to putting together the pieces. Uh, uh, finding the two inch pipe fittings was a story in itself. Uh, I wound up having to order them online. None of the plumbing houses, hardware stores, tractor stores, uh, farm supplies, none of them around here had two inch pipe fittings. So in any case, I ordered the pipe fittings, had all of them, and just felt pretty certain I could go to most any mechanic shop and pick up a brake drum. Well, I was wrong on that, too. Uh, most of the mechanics, well, all the mechanics around said, yeah, we do some uh, uh, disc brakes, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, some uh, drum brakes, but I haven't replaced a brake drum in years. And several years ago, when the price of uh, scrap iron got to be so high, I'm sure all the shops cleaned out any supply of old brake drums, rotors, and stuff like that they had. But after making several stops, uh, checking around, I just was not able to find a brake drum. Uh, so it was actually yesterday, yesterday was Sunday, on the way to church, uh, I was thinking about, I wonder who at church might have, you know, laying around their shop a brake drum or anything like that, and then it dawned on me. Why don't I use, or well, the idea of a brake drum is the cast iron. So why don't I use a cast iron skillet? So I didn't say anything to the wife, but while she was taking a shower this morning, I went through her kitchen cabinets and I dug out her 10 inch cast iron skillet. I don't think she'll miss it. She don't, she don't uh, use cast iron that much. But we're gonna see if we can make a uh, forge out of that. I, of course, went back to uh, YouTube and went to searching for a cast iron skillet forge and most of my search results were was about making a skillet on a forge, not using a skillet for a forge. I did find one or two where people were using it, but none. I did not find one of actually building one. So I don't know. This might be a first. Uh, they may, I'm sure there's others out there. But we're going to see if we can't turn this cast iron skillet into a forge. So I'm going to turn around over to the mill. First thing we need to do is put a about a two, two and an eighth inch, two and three eighths inch hole in the middle of it to mount this pipe flange on. So we're gonna see about drilling uh, a large hole in cast iron. I'll meet you over at the mill. I'm over at the mill now. I could probably have done this on a drill press, but I feel a lot more comfortable having this uh, frying pan, frying uh, skillet uh, secured down to the table. This is a two and three eighths inch hole saw. And I actually found a chart online. Uh, I'll try to print that out when I got the computer out here. But it gave uh, speeds for hole saws in various types of material, wood, cast iron, stainless steel, and so forth. What it recommended for a 2 and 3 eighths in cast iron was an RPM of 95. The slowest my mill goes is 115. But we're going to try that. and. 
I'm just going to take it good and slow. I'm sure most of you know when you're drilling cast iron, you don't need lubricant because there's enough carbon in the cast iron to serve as a lubricant. Uh, I may put a little coolant on it if it looks like it's going to be hard to drill and if it looks like it's getting too hot, I'll put some coolant over here on it uh, just to keep from messing up the, uh, the drill, the hole saw. So let's give it a try. I've got it centered up. First off, I don't want to mess up the hole saw, and I don't want to break this if I can stand it. We all know that cast iron is brittle. Let's take a look. Oh, that's cutting good. Well, well. I spent several minutes last night of what should have been sleeping time worried to death that I wouldn't be able to drill a hole in cast iron. And that might have been the simplest part of this. I've drilled cast iron before for threading, but uh, never anything this big. So now while we're right here, we're going to uh, drill our hole pattern for the flange. It's going to mount on there. And being four holes, there's no real need of doing a bolt hole pattern on the DRO. But I've measured between these, and these is 3.9, 3.910. Uh, on center. So half of that being radius, radius is 1.955. Let me pick a, grab a couple of drills. I'm going to, going to see since this is a, a flat surface, if I can get by with a quarter inch drill, not having to drill a uh, lead hole. So we want to come 1.955 off of center. Go up to about 600 RPM. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get all four of these drilled with a quarter inch, and then I'll put the three eighths in. Okay, I'm going to get the vacuum out now, clean up this uh, cast iron dust here, and then we'll meet back over at the workbench and we'll start assembling this part of the forge. Okay, what we're going to use for stand for the uh, forge is this metal chair. Uh, it was chair height. I cut off, cut some pieces of one inch black pipe and extended the legs. So I got it up here where I don't have to bend over. But we need to put a hole in this, the size of this boss on the flange. So I've got a, I believe this is a three inch hole saw here. Okay. Now this is all gonna be bolted together. And it just happens that this chair bottom has hole patterns, has a hole pattern already in it, and four of them match this. So I'm going to drill those out. And 
Now's when I suspect about six hands will come in real good uh, to hold all these pieces because there's one more piece you haven't seen yet. This is going to be the grate that will be on the inside to keep from the coals from falling all the way through our pipe. This is just a six inch, six and a half inch cast iron uh, floor grate. Even though these are 3 8 inch holes, I'm using 5 16 bolts because as it turns out, this hole pattern in here is close to what we've drilled, but not quite. But the three, using the 5 16 will give us just a little bit of, of play in. And I think... All right, what I'm contemplating is whether or not I won't need to put that flange under the very bottom to bolt it together. That would put the pan tight against the seat. This raises the pan up just a little bit off the seat. I don't think there'll be any heat loss there at all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with this. Skillet is mounted to a stand now. What we need to do is turn it over and start doing our our vent and our uh, and our air supply. All the pieces are bolted together now. What I'm going to do is take this uh, four-inch nipple. Again, this is all two-inch pipe. And this certainly does not have to be sealed and does not have to be any more than hand tight. All right, following that four inch nipple, I'm putting a, a T. I've got the handle back out in this direction. I want the air supply to be opposite of the handle. I'll show you what we're gonna do with the handle or what my thoughts with the handle are a little bit later. Now, we've got another four inch T. It's going to be here to, uh, as a drain for the uh, coals, ashes, so forth. But we need to be able to stop this up. So I'm going to swing it around to the vise over here and I'm going to show you what I'm going to use, what I'm going to put on the end of this to use as a, uh, uh, as a trap to stop the airflow that's come, going to come in here. We want to force it down to the coals or up to the coals when this is turned over. Don't want it coming out of our exhaust down here. I'm just using the vise because I don't have enough hands. But what this is, of course, is a tractor exhaust cover. We're going to be using it upside down. I've put a, another hole in here, and for the time being, I'm just going to put a weight on there to hold that up as I look at it and use this some, I'll likely come up with some type of a handle. This is a two and a half inch exhaust cover. The pipe is two inch. Outside diameter is probably close to uh, two and a quarter, something like that. But this is, was the closest fit I could find at the farm supply store. So I put just a little bushing ring of some sheet metal 
through there or between the two. Okay, so now the four inch nipple, the other four inch nipple will go on top. And I think I'm gonna want this turned to one side or the other. Okay, now we need our air supply. This is a nine inch nipple here. Before we turn this up and power it up, I just went and got my hair dryer, or got the wife's hair dryer. I don't need a hair dryer, but she was taking a nap, so uh, went to her bathroom and swiped this, but it doesn't quite fit in there. So I'm going to see what I've got that I can knock out real quick to adapt this to there. I do want to use this hair dryer because it's got a cool button. Even though you've got to you've got to hold the button in for cool, I can put a pipe clamp on that and hold to hold that button in and it's two speed. So she pretty she had a pretty nice hair dryer here. Uh, hmm, the cord even retracts. I didn't know that. Look at there. Well partially retracts. Okay. Let me turn around to the lathe, see what I got, or look in my material bin, see what I got that might work to make an adapter. All right, I got this piece of two and a half inch aluminum that's about, let's see, just a drop. It's, it's about two and a half inches long as well. Now let's chuck this up. And the through bore for that doesn't need to be any bigger than the size of the air opening on the hair dryer, which is about 1.8, 1.82, something like that. Make me a note right here, 1.82. And we'll use that same 3 8 bit that we started out with, or that we started, we drilled our, our skillet holes with. I've got a one inch bit. It's not the best shape in the world, but it it should be fine to rough us, rough us out a hole to begin with in this aluminum. We'll s slow the lathe on down though to start with about 400 RPM. Okay, I think that's all the drilling. We'll get the boring bar set up and bore that out to about 1.8. 1.82, somewhere along there. Don't 
like having to extend a boring bar out that long, but that's the length piece I got already, so it should be perfectly fine for just an air vent. The RPM back up to about seven, eight hundred. Now that was a one inch bit, and I realize it's a drill bit always drills oversized. But I've just set my DRO to zero there, and I'll bring it out to about about 60 thousandths on that, and then we'll measure. All right. And I'm gonna set my carriage stop right there so that I don't accidentally crash into the chuck. I'll bring you back when I get a little closer on this hole. Okay, to match this diameter of where the airflow of the hair dryer is coming out, we needed 1.82, and we're at 1. Uh, what did I say? 1.76 now. So we need about 60 more thousandths. So I'll bring that on out, 20, 40, 60. We'll make this pass. Then it's always a good practice when you're boring to make several spring passes. But I'm gonna make, or to make a spring pass. As much as I got sticking out though, there, even though this is aluminum, I'm gonna make probably three or four passes, spring passes, uh, just to be sure it's cleaned up all the way. But let's get this 60,000 first. All right, I'm satisfied that's clean now. So I'm gonna back the tool out of the way and bring it out. Now, just like anything that's molded plastic, there's a little bit of taper in this, but the smallest end is 2.182, 2.182, and it goes up 2.245, but for right now, we're going to deal with the, I'll go with 2.188, let's try that. All right, we've got about 300 thousandths to go from there instead of the 30 thousandths, 30 plus thousandths. All right, it's, uh, it's starting in and going in about a quarter of an inch, but remember I showed you there was a little taper in this, 
So I'm going to get the compound set up now that I can actually cut just a little taper on there, not much. I'd love to, for this to go in at least three quarters, prefer it to go in the full inch. So I'll get set up for that and bring it right back. Okay, now that cut to the bottom that time. Just a matter of getting the tool at the correct angle. And that is ideal. Get that swarf out of there. Now I'm going to cool that piece off a little bit and I'm going to turn it around and turn this other end down here to where it will fit inside the pipe. So let me get that cooled down and, and we'll be turned around. Okay, I've got a workpiece turned around in now and we want to get this in about an inch and a half of it down to the diameter, inside diameter of the pipe, which is about 2.1 inches. It's two inch pipe, but it measures about 2.1. 2 so we've got about 400 thousandths to go on this. That's just right. All right, I know this video is probably getting long, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to the mill and I'm going to put two quarter 20 holes in here to uh, and thread them at 90 degrees perpendicular to each other to tighten down. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this to tighten down on the hair dryer. But I'll do that off camera and then we'll come back and put these final pieces together and fire up the forge and see if all this work has been in vain. Okay, a quick recap before we carry it outside and fire it up. We've got the skillet. We've got this floor drain uh, mounted in the bottom of it as a grate to keep the ashes or keep the coals from falling in. We went under that with a flange, a four inch nipple, a T, another two inch nipple, and on the uh, exhaust, I've just got some uh, weights tied to it now temp as a temporary. What I want to do is fix a handle where I can just tap it to uh, vibrate it a little bit. Hair dryer over here with the nine inch uh, uh, nipple sticking out. Got a couple of screws to hold that in place. The hair dryer. I've got just a temporary wire tie on here right now to keep it in the cool mode. But this hair dryer's got two speeds. There's the high. Lots of air coming out. And then here's the low. Have no idea which will be needed. But I'm going to get this set up outside. I'm going to put some charcoal in there. Uh, heat it up, and then we'll turn the air on, stick a piece of, of uh, uh, steel in there, and see if we can get it red hot. So stick with me. All right, I got a few charcoal bricks in there now. I got some lighter fluid on it. As I say, I'm just going to try to light it up, get it hot before I turn the air on. And I realized 
when I started to do this, I didn't have any charcoal lighter fluid. That was Zippo lighter fluid. So it's, it's a bit more combustible. I'm gonna let this go a while until it starts getting, uh, coal start getting white, and then I'm gonna turn the air on. Slowly but surely, this cheap charcoal is, uh, is finally starting to light some. I had to break it all down, put some paper underneath it, and go ahead and turn the fan or the uh, hair dryer on. I got it on low now, and it's starting to light up, so we're gonna let it build up the heat. Okay, I put a few more charcoal bricks in there. The last thing I want is it to fail because there was not enough charcoal in. So I'm gonna stick a little piece of metal in there. This is quarter inch thick stuff. And I definitely got to get me some longer tongs and a rake. Probably not the most ideal day to uh, fire up a forge for the first time. 95 degrees here in eastern North Carolina. Um, it's, this forge is going to be just like the milling machine in the shop in there and the lathe and the surface grinder and even the hand tools I got in there. It's going to take a while to learn how to use this, but it's definitely getting the piece hot. I've added a little bit more charcoal. Uh, uh, I think coal will work a whole lot better. The charcoal is burning up pretty fast. Uh, of course, it's cheap charcoal. It may be part of it. But I'm going to give you a tilt right quick. As you can see, I'm in the edge of the shade here. But this is pretty much all blue skies today. So when I pull the piece out, I think it's probably going to be kind of difficult for you to see it, but it is red hot. It's been in just a little over 10 minutes now, and that's me experimenting with the uh, coals. Uh, uh, I think I've figured out that I obviously need a bed of coals under the bottom, the workpiece, and then uh, more on the top. But I've got the fan, and the uh, hair dryer in the low speed now. That seems to be working a lot better. The high speed was pretty much blowing sparks all over everywhere out here and uh, embers. I didn't want to set the woods on fire. So let me pull a piece out and see if you can get an idea of just how, uh, just how hot it's got. I know you can't see it in this outside light out here, but it is red hot all over. So, to kind of draw this to a conclusion, I see no reason whatsoever this, uh, this is not gonna work. It's not a, obviously it's not a brake drum, but, uh, it's cast iron, it's held together, uh, it's getting my piece red hot enough, getting it hot enough in just this about 10 minutes that I feel certain I could work with it. Uh, and as I said earlier, it's going to take some getting used to. This is the first time I've ever even seen a forge, let alone try to fire one up myself. So stick with the channel. Uh, as time goes by, I'll learn from it, uh, and maybe you can learn with me. Take care, and we'll see you on the next video.